quality really helps a flute player to develop um, legato tonguing, but also in bringing a melody out that has um, this emphasis on, on each of the notes. So I'm really kind of, in order to bring those notes out, I'm really kind of doing, I don't quite want to call it a forte piano, but there's a certain emphasis on each note rather than Let's see if I can do it without emphasis. I give a little more push on each note and then I'm pulling away from each note. So a little bit like a forte piano or a mezzo piano piano or something. I also take a little bit of liberty here. Um, every two measures, I, I kind of change the dynamic. So uh, after the first two measures, I really do a step up a little bit on the second two measures. I just feel like it should grow. It's not written in the music. Um, and I think that's about it for this one. Uh, you know, as always, we're gonna pay attention to phrasing. And I personally think you can breathe anywhere that you can make it sound musical. Um, in these really regular melodies, like these Moise melodies, that's usually over two to four measures. Um, it's hard to make certain other breaths work. But I think, you know, whether you play this and breathe every two measures or every four measures is much less of an issue than the fact that you make those breaths sound musical and that you work the breath into the phrasing and into the shape of the phrasing so that the breath itself is not separate from the music. So. Have fun, this is a really beautiful melody. And if you work on the variations that you'll find um, in the Marcel Moyes book, this is a wonderful, wonderful octave slur variation where you get to practice um, the, diminishing, uh, the diminishing octave as you go up. It's a great, great exercise also in itself. So memorize melody number four. It's a beautiful melody. I hope you enjoy playing it and, and working on it.